Good morning, everyone. I hope you've had a good day so far. I am actually going to be reading to you today from my bedroom, and I'm running out of places in the house to show you. So um, I thought I would start here, and I wanted to show you the quote that I actually have on my wall here. Begin and end each day with a grateful heart. And I think more than ever, it is super important that we all remember to do that. Anyway, today's story is called The Name Jar, and it is by Yang Suk Choi. I think you'll like it. You may have heard it. It's a pretty popular story, but it's definitely one of my favorites. So I thought I'd share it with you again today. The Name Jar by Yang Suk Choi. Through the school bus window, Yun Hai looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Yun Hai's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name? Yun Hai had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Yun Hai, surprising her. Yun Hai looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine, Yun Hai answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Yun Hai, said Yun Hai. Une, the girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, ooh, une, some kids chanted. No, no, Yun Hai corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Yun Hai. Oh, it's you, hey, the boy said. Like you, hey. What about, hey, you? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Yun Hai hurried to get off. You, hey, bye-bye, the kids yelled as she left. Yun Hai felt herself blush. Yun Hai stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? asked a curly-haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? he asked cheerfully. Yun Hai nodded, and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Kokotos, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokotos thanked him and greeted Yun Hai. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Yun Hai smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Yun Hai pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokotos showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Yun Hai kept thinking about her name. How was school, Yun Hai? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Yun Hai simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you are learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you're a good Korean. I will, replied Yun Hai. But, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Yun Hai is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Yun Hai complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. 
You are different, Yun Hai, her mother said. That's a good thing. Yun Hai just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Yun Hai and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fadil's falafel, Tony's pizza, and Dot's deli. A big graffiti painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's market. The sign was in both English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean style spicy pickled cabbage and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Yun Hai's favorite for soup. It made Yun Hai smile. Just because we've moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Yun Hai. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Yun Hai nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Yun Hai, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Yun Hai nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Yun Hai. That evening, Yun Hai stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Hi, my name is Shuji, she said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning, when Yun Hai arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Yun Hai took one out and read it aloud. Daisy. That's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. Yun Hai took out the rest of the paper. Tamala, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Yun Hai nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over Yun Hai's face. Ralph quickly said, We'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like, or pick them all, and you'll have the longest name in history. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Yun Hai looked out the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Yun Hai turned around to see the curly haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said, and you? Don't you have any name? Yun Hai thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Yun Hai said. And then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day the jar got fuller with more names and Yun Hai read them all. She found a few names she liked, Miranda, Stella, Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I've put in three more, said Ralph. Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? 
Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. When Yunhai got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, To my Yunhai, I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here the moon is up, but there the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Yunhai. Your grandma forever. Yunhai took out her wooden stamp and filled a paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Yunhai walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Yunhai. Hello, Mr. Kim, Yunhai replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer, turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Unhi, he asked her with his eyes open wide. Yunhai looked quickly at Mr. Kim, then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Yunhai. And it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Yunhai, Joey said slowly, and this time perfectly. It made Yunhai smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Yunhai, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, Yunhai came to class early to look at the names one last time, but the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper, paper with a name on it. Yunhai slipped it in her pocket. Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Yunhai said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokoto's desk or on any other desk, and it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves. As soon as the other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon, Mr. Kokotos came in and Ralph shouted at him, The name jar is gone, the jar with all the names in it. Gone, Mr. Kokotos replied. With a look of concern, he asked Yunhai, Did you get a chance to read all the names? Yunhai nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Yunhai wrote her name in both English and Korean on the board. I like the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me, she told the class, but I realized that I liked my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Yunhai means grace. Grace, grace in high, shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Yunhai, unhai, unhai. Yunhai said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon the kids began to say it better, even Mr. Kokotos. They applauded Yunhai's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Yunhai. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokotos reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Yunhai heard her new friends say goodbye. Bye, Yunhai, see you tomorrow. Goodbye, Yunhai. Yunhai said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Yunhai, Yunhai, come downstairs, mother called up to Yunhai. Your friend is here. Yunhai rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? asked Yunhai breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well, I took it but only because I wanted you to keep your own name, and you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them, he asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir, Yunhai said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us, names with good meanings. I can do that, agreed Yunhai. 
I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Chinku, read Yunhai. That means friend. And Chinku smiled back. Hey everyone, I hope you liked the story. I think I put my dog to sleep. Otis, oh, he's awake, but he's going back to sleep. All right, everyone, I hope you have a great day. Stay tuned for another message for one of our great teachers. Hello, Hidden Hills families. This is Mrs. Belding from Kindergarten in K0. I just want to say hello. I miss you all. I hope everyone's able to stay uh, well and safe, and um, I hope you're enjoying your time with your families. Miss you. Bye for now.